guy's driving with his left blinker on, turning right onto a one-way roundabout. However, not the craziest driving I've seen today. First things first, I have not had an impossible whopper in two weeks, and I forgot about lunch today, so we're doing it. All right, you say one more time. Pickles, mustard, and tomato. Sorry, only ketchup. No, ketchup. no ketchup, uh, but I do want pickles on there. Normally I sit out here under one of these trees when I come here. Today I think I'm going to take it with me to the location because it's at a park. I'm thinking picnic day. But first, a necessary evil. It's not any cheaper up here than it is in town. You know, I do like convenience stores. I haven't taken you guys into one of these yet, so here we go. I'm not going to get any today, obviously, but they do have really good pizza. I pretty much live off of this stuff, you guys, as well as some other stuff. Not too much in there right now. It's a little bit after the lunch hour. These juices, you guys, are really great. I'm especially addicted to the purple one. I don't even know what's in it. Tart cherry, white cherry, oh no, white berry, pomegranate, bilberry, whatever that is. Apple and purple carrot. It is delicious. Actually, you know what? I'm doing it. But I'm looking for this raspberry lemonade stuff. They don't have it at home, but they did have it up in Springfield. Oh, yes, there it is. I've been wanting to try the peach too, but they have that rain so I was so excited about finding that lemonade, I forgot to get gas. I had to go back and do that. I found it. I don't know how, but I found it. That's actually pretty impressive considering that the directions I made myself are at the moment sitting right next to my laptop at home. Well, it's in the sun, but nonetheless, it looks like as good a spot as any. We're at Grant Park, by the way, Springfield, Missouri. It has a public pool, some playground equipment, and this, this is what we're going through here in just a minute, you guys. It's a railroad museum inside of a train. I love it. It's only open from two to four on Saturdays. You know what? I'm changing my mind. I don't want to get sunburned. This is the lowest little bench, you guys. They got it right, by the way. I was actually a little bit worried after all that hubbub at the window. That was pretty funny, though. Great view from here too. Oh, I cannot wait. This is gonna be so much fun. Here's the pool if you can see it through the bars. And this place is pretty close to where my grandma lived when I was a kid, so we will come down here. I do not remember all those slides though. That is awesome. I especially love that yellow one there on the drop-off. It reminds me of a slide at River Country that I went to when I was a kid down in Florida. And I heard that they closed that place down. Kind of a shame. Here we go toward the train though. A fresco sign there. Pretty cool. So this museum spans through four cars and some on the outside. Oh, I'm so excited. I don't even know which way to start. I guess up here toward the front, here's some railroad signs. Hmm. Inside the box where you can see how the signals work, I guess is what that is. Oh, how cute. This is a prototype here of caboose number 56, which was built here in Springfield during World War II. And this place has limited hours because they're run by volunteers, which actually is pretty cool. You can get special tours by appointment though. It's amazing how big these things are in person. Look at this. I don't know what they call these little carts, but I've always liked them. It'd be fun to try and ride one sometime. Can't ride this one though. It'd be a pretty short ride, even if you could. Man, you guys, look at these gears that turn the wheels. I don't know what they're called, but that's so cool. Okay, gotta do it. <laughs> one more. Oh, that was the one that did the bell. That's actually a little heavier than it looks, you guys. If that went dry, and this bearing would heat up and the potential for a derailment would happen. What would happen is this would burn off and sometimes it'd break the axle and the train would end up all over the country. I'm used to in the caboose, that's what the guy would do. He'd set up there. If this caught fire, there'd be a big old bunch of smoke and flame coming out. And what they'd have to do if they caught it, they'd have to pour water on it or snow sometimes, but they'd repack it using 
this thing here, you pack it with cotton waste and put oil in there. So how long, not counting all these stops and stuff, would you say it would take to get from here to St. Louis on a train like this? Well, if you were a passenger, if she was on a passenger, if she was one of the top rated trains, I don't know, it's 220 some odd miles it might take her, you know, I don't know, I'd have to look at the schedule. But back then, the crews were allowed to work 16 hours. And sometimes you might use a whole 16 hours going to St. Louis. Especially during the war when all the maximum effort was to defeat the enemy. And, I mean, still better than having to ride your horse up that way. Well, <laughs> There's a turret that takes all the steam pressure and puts it all the accessories, like the air pump, the coal pusher, which is that big thing that pushes all the coal over the, over the screw in the back, the blower. If the engine was sitting for a while, you bank the fire and you put a little blower on it because you got to have draft going to kind of barbecue there. And there's the power of the stoker motor. There's ashes still on top of there from the last time she had a fire. Oh, my brother and sister this morning. And they were just Oh, I like that painting. Oh, I love these buttons. I love these. There's the Frisco right there. Oh, there's so much cool stuff in here. They even have a Frisco bowling team shirt. Excuse me, sir, but I don't have a ticket. I don't know why it cracks me up that the toilet has Frisco special written on it. Oh, some little pictures of some of the cars. Oh, this is cool. Railway safety trophy. Ooh, signal relays, I like those. That silver thing back there appears to be a warning horn. Ooh, old sign. A picture of a dispatcher at work. switchboards there. That's cool. Okay, so if you guys ever see a nail with a number on it like that, they were used to indicate the year the ties were installed. I never knew that. That's pretty awesome. Wait, what about the one with the X on it? Oh, I love the picture with all the hot air balloons. This bell was involved in the collision of St. Louis San Francisco Railway trains 3210 and 3211. That was in Mustang, Oklahoma, September 1st, 1974. Man, you guys, eight families who lived within a mile of that accident were evacuated because of the possibility of explosions. I love that little sign. And if anyone local is interested, volunteers needed. The Boston Mountain Tunnel? I wonder where that is. 23 miles south of Fayetteville. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's a good one. All those. Ooh, boxcar really stuff. I was wondering how you got up to the next floor. There you go. Some stairs at the back of the car. There we go. We can actually go upstairs on this car. This is the last car here, the fourth car. And they do have exhibits up here too. This is so cool. I would have wanted to have ridden upstairs. If you are actually on that car, ah! you're riding. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Down there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that cow had an accident, I see. <laughs> it's one of my favorite 
favorite things about model railroads is looking at all the details like that. We even put the city cemetery. Oh, you did. Who was buried there? Oh, how cute. Look at this tiny one. I guess that was still part of the third car there. I thought it was the last one. Yeah, we'll get into the caboose. I like that light. Oh, here's a picture of what the other guy was talking about, how it used to be painted red, white, and blue. That is pretty snazzy. Look at this chair, you guys. And here's the view from up there. You guys, climbing up and down those things is no joke. That is a lot harder than it looks. He brought the train in here. Hi, Frank. Thank you for doing that. He's been here for a long, 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 long time. It looks like he's well rested. Yeah. The only sad thing about cabooses is you won't see them anymore. Aww. And it's because of that terrible thing. That is Fred. It stands for a flashing rear end device. Mm. And it goes on the last car of the train. It has a flashing light. It sends out radio signals to alert trains that there's trains on the track. I just don't think of trains without cabooses. That is sad. Towns, and they would sit down. Santa would be on the box car throwing out candy. <laughs> That is amazing. And then this picture down here, that is <gasps> the picture Ooh. of the Ringling Brothers Barn and Bailey trains. Yeah, I'm sure they you have, heard the gas there. I love circus. They have uh, two trains. They had a red train and a blue train. One ran north and south. The other ran east and west. Well, thank you. That was oh, awesome. We were quite well Here's the tracks down there. And we're about to go back down and off of the caboose. a better shot of that. There's that thing we were just sitting in. A little walkway that we passed through. We made it out just in time. It closes in seven minutes. And we have a depot here. I'm not actually going to go in because it's so close to closing. Just showing you guys they have it. And even though this place is free, look at this you guys. Help keep the electric bill on. Help out the volunteers. This really is a great little place to come to. I don't know why I said little, but for me, a museum inside a train, that place is actually pretty big. Had to go back out to the car to get some donation money. I never have cash with me. Today, I actually did have a tin, which granted is not that much I know. I mean, I'd gladly pay twice that much to get in this place. So that was the railroad museum inside a train. It's about an hour drive back home, so I'm gonna get started. And I will see you guys next week. Later.